We're going to talk about late night pass, and the team are here to my right. We've got the breeder, Mum, uh, Pippa, no doubt proud, uh, beating through her heart. Uh, Tom Ellis, the trainer, the master operator, and uh, Gina, who's got the responsibility of steering home a Grand National contender. Pippa, how are we feeling? Nervous. Two weeks to go? <laughs> Two weeks to go, yeah, counting now. T Tom, the, the cameras have been round, you're now on the telly. It's starting to get quite serious, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, the build-up's starting to, to bubble away quite nicely, but, uh, yeah, it's starting to sink in a little bit, just what a big deal this is, really. Now, sports people think a bit differently to, to us. Generally, you're supposed to wait until the next day and then the next day and just deal with the moment as it comes along. How, how are you taking all of this so far, Gina? Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to do. Um, definitely just take each day as it comes and just try and just carry on like normal, really. Um, just wait for the day. How easy is that? Uh, um, I thought it was easy, but it's proving a bit more difficult now. Um, but, yeah, I'll just try and take each day as it comes. And, Tom, I, I, I suspect so far, the last few weeks, it's going to get worse. How many people, when they come up and see you at the moment, ask about the horse before they ask about you? Yeah, most of them, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just nice to be part of it all, really, definitely. When did the, the idea that the horse would come back to you as a, as a national contender, when, when, when was the gem of that? When did the, the, those discussions start? Probably... Um, after he won the cross-country race at Cheltenham in December, it uh, looked like he'd got a realistic chance of getting into the National at that point. And we'd sort of discussed it previously about potentially taking a licence out um, anyway, given we've got a huge number of point of pointers in the yard as it is and finding it increasingly difficult to place them. So um, it was probably a natural progression for us, really, but this has just accelerated it. Yeah, definitely. We should probably go back to the beginning. And uh, people will <coughs> look at the names of the horses and they'll think this, this Ellis clan. They they love a late night out. Clearly, <laughs> where, where where did all of this start, Pippa? Well, it it started with uh, I used to go away on holiday with my daughter. We had a long holiday from school, and every time I came back, Tom and his dad had bought another horse. <laughs> and the one time I came back, and they'd bought the mum of of late night pass, and she was called late night dip, and. So the late night things just stuck really, and hopefully keep it going. Excellent, and of course you you rode the I rode the, the dam many many yeah. many yeah. times. Tell, tell us a bit about her and that those experiences. She was mad, to be honest. Um, yeah, she was she wasn't a bad horse at all. Perhaps if we'd had her to train at this stage of our careers, we'd have done a better job of her probably. Um, but she didn't have the best wind, and she was a lunatic. But um, she could rattle along fairish and she jumped really well, yeah. which she's passed on to this horse. Um, but yeah, she, you actually rode her on the last time she ran, didn't you? Yeah, I did, she yeah. She got injured, yeah. unfortunately. But um, yeah, she was pretty unassuming, really, in terms, like, she didn't have a fancy pedigree or anything like that. She just has managed to throw some quite nice foals, so. A bit like the human world, genetics is, is weird and amazing, Pippa, sometimes, yeah. isn't it? You never know what you're going to get, and yeah. I think I, particularly, you know, have just been extremely lucky. And, the, and you, your breeding operation, does, does it happen at home, or do, do the... Tom do and Gina foal them. So you see all of that pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty we, much? We saw Bob Bourne, that's his name at home, Bob, we saw him born. There he is, yep. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's pretty special. Try and, try and for people who who are just racing fans, who just like the sport or love a bet. Try and put that into some kind of context for us. Well, I don't know that I can, really. I mean, it's for anybody that breeds anything, they, you just dream you can win a race. I just wanted to win a point-to-point. -point. So to have something, you know, like this, that's done this, and to do it as a family, yeah. it's just very special. Um, I'd say to anybody that, you know, is thinking of breeding, have a go, because you might be lucky. You just don't know. And when you've... When you've seen the story from behind the scenes. I suppose when you've been, you've been handing out the food from, yeah. from day one, that, yeah. that, that must be extraordinary to have all those memories along the, along the yeah, way. Yeah, it really is, you know, and it's something you'll never forget. And, you know, we just, we all love it. It's, yeah. It's and special. this particular horse, Late Night Pass, is there anything that kind of sticks out in terms of characteristics that on that journey at home along the way you've, you've seen and remember? 
Well, he's always been a brilliant jumper, hasn't mm. he? Right, right from the word go, he, he was very much a natural, and I think that's the thing that sticks out in him. And he, he's very easy to train, from what I understand, and he's, he's a nice chap. My little granddaughter can lead him around after he's done his work, and, yeah, he's just he's a nice person. Fantastic. Yeah, likes but... to be first out in the morning, doesn't he, Jean? Oh, yeah, has to be first. <laughs> Gets a bit fuming if he's, he's not, not first. <laughs> Absolutely fuming. Um, he's got plenty of character. Um, he's such a bonny horse. Um, like I said, he loves to go out first, and you know about it if he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 in terms of where he's at now, Tom. Yeah. And and where he's come from. How how would you describe that that journey? And where, in terms of your expectations, your hopes, <coughs> your desires. Uh, so he started out. He looked <coughs> pretty moderate, to be honest. Um, took us six goes to win a point of point with him. Uh, I think what he did do is he strengthened up as sort of he as he went from a four to a five year old quite nicely, um, and he won three pointer points with us that first season. Qualified for the intermediate final that they hold at Cheltenham evening meeting, and he went there and won that. And we were like, well, that's job done. Like he's achieved so that, every, that, everything we could ever wish for. And that's more. like back in 2019 to yeah. to, to give us a, a sense of time. Yeah, exactly that. And then um, when did he he won a Bridget rode him, uh, Gina's sister rode him at Warwick when the amateurs couldn't ride during COVID. And he, and he bolted up, to be fair, at Warwick in a really competitive hunter chase, 18 runners that day on, on bottomless ground. And we thought, well, we'll have a crack at the Cheltenham Festival with him now um, for the big hunter chase there. And he ran really well, finished fourth, probably did plenty on the front end, to be honest. Um, and then the, sort of the idea was sort of born then that we'll go to Aintree with him for the Fox Hunters that season. He finished second, ran really, really well. And Dan, uh, best mates with him since school, and he came straight up to me afterwards. He said, if you miss Cheltenham next year, you'll win at Aintree. And uh, as usual, Skelton was right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he takes full credit for that. Um, but yeah, he, he won really nicely the next year when we, when we skipped Cheltenham and went straight there, so. Um, uh, Gina's probably best served to talk us through this. <laughs> the, the, the experience, the, the, the thrill, the, 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 just give us a sense of it. Yeah, I've, I've obviously, I'd ridden around there I think three times previous, but not on a competitive horse, just, you know, a, a safe jumper, um, which, which got me round. But, um, you know, after I had those three rides, I was just really keen to have something that was going to be competitive. And um, I think it was Dan that said after he'd won at Warwick, you've got to take a horse to Aintree. And um, sort of, we've always been really keen on Cheltenham, so like, well, we'll go there first and then have a go at Aintree. Um, and yeah, he took to it so well. We schooled him at home beforehand, and he jumped the fence as well. Um, so we just thought, well, we'll t take our chance, really. And I just got the most unbelievable ride off him. Um, probably better. It was better the second year than the first year. He was a bit cautious early on the first year, but the second year, he just he literally never missed a beat. Like, I couldn't have had a better ride, really. He's a fantastic jumper. He, at Aintree, he's, he goes out to his right. From, from time to time, is that... It... It's been a bit of a trait of his for a while now. He's, he seems to... I don't know for what reasons why he does it, but he's, he has nearly much done it from the outset, really. Mm. Um, I don't know if he just does it to make a bit of room for himself, because um, he is only... He, I don't think people realise how small he is. Um, there's very little to sit on. He's got a really short, weedy sort of neck. Um, he's just the most unassuming horse. I love um, it. He sounds like me. <laughs> Jack, my brother Jack always says he's an overachiever. With just, just plenty more ability. <laughs> Pippa, what, that, that experience as an owner breeder, what, what was that like? It still gives me goosebumps. Every yeah. time I watch it, it gives me goosebumps. I don't think anything I'll ever... You, you can't describe it, really. It's, it's just a phenomenal experience. It's, yeah. are, you, are you a dreamer? Have you... <laughs> no, no, I've never... No, I'm not a dreamer, really. So you've not joined the dots? At all in, no, in a quiet it moment. Took quite a lot of convincing to get there in yeah, the first was, place. Yeah, so. <laughs> I took a lot of it convincing to get to the Fox Hunters yeah, yeah. about the Grand National. I'm a nervous spectator. Do you actually do you actually watch? I normally hide behind my husband for the first three or four fences, and I can tell by his body language what's going on. And then I'll watch a bit, and I don't normally watch the last <laughs> two. <laughs> but. <laughs> of all the horses in the race, actually, Tom, I mean, he, you know, let's touch all, all wood, but, I mean, in his, his whole career, however many starts it is, I mean, he has, 
he's had one minor blip, hasn't he, over fences. He's, he seems such a good conveyance. Without blaming the jockey, I think she'd take credit for that that day as well. But no, he's, he's got a phenomenal record. Touchwood, he's just been a very natural jumper um, from the word go. He, he's not really exuberant, he's just neat and accurate. And I think he knows his limits, given his size. So, yeah, I'd like it. you need a lot of luck, don't you? But um, he seems to come alive when he sees those big fences anyway. Three times he's been there. Mm. First, second, and, and in and around the placings as well. Another circuit to go, Gina, this time, though. Um, how do you, do you feel about that kind of challenge for him and also for you? Um, yeah, I mean, it's an unknown, isn't it? Who knows if he's going to stay that far? And that was the big question when he ran in a cross-country race. Was he going to stay that far? Um, because he, he hasn't looked to stay three miles that well in the past. Like, he seems to be better over sort of 2.5, seems to be his best trip. But I think it's a bit of an old saying, and I'm, I'm a bit of a believer in it, that the best Grand National horses are normally two and a half milers, because I just think the three mile horses are perhaps, because they go so fast, are perhaps on the edge of a bridle, sort of from quite an early stage, whereas the two and a half mile horses, you know, have got a bit more speed and they're finding it easier earlier on, so they save more for the end. Um, so I'm sort of just hope he is a strong traveller, so mm. I'm hoping that, you know, that'll stand him in good stead and hopefully I'll be able to save a bit for the end. Is Tactics, something for another day, maybe in the days leading up to it? Or is this something, Tom, you've, you've already been, been through and, and continue to? <laughs> I don't generally talk tactics to Gina because she doesn't listen to me anyway. But uh, <laughs> No, I think that what's probably helped him get home better this time is we've ridden him more conservatively over those extended trips at Cheltenham and, and that's something I'd say we'll replicate in a fortnight's time, really. I don't think he needs to be up there making the running anyway, that is for sure. So, yeah, I'd say we'll be patient ride and see how we get on, really. Yeah. These days, the, the National, I mean, you've ridden around the, you know, one circuit in the, in the Fox Hunters a, a few times now. The, the, the pace they go these days, do you, do you think you can ride it any way? Um, I don't really know the answer to that. Um, I think you just got to, I think, the start, obviously, get get... A, where I'm going to line up at the start is sort of going to determine where everyone else is when I get there, probably. So do I go on the inside, middle, outside sort of thing? And obviously, bearing in mind, he can jump a little bit to the right. Mm. So I would imagine I'll be towards the right-hand side of the start um, and then just try and find a little pocket um, and just try and get into the best rhythm I can, really. And, it, Pippa, you know, you'll have, like me, like us, you'll have watched it on Grandstand you know, for years and years and years, where the whole broadcast, you know, started yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's evolved slightly, but it, the, the pageantry, the way the day unfolds, it is still something quite special. How, oh, how about is. being part of that? Well, I've, I've been watching that sort of thing since I was a little girl. I used to watch it with my father. Mm. Um, so to be actually going with a horse that we've bred, that my son trains, my daughter-in-law rides, it's bonkers. It's a bit mad, isn't it? It is, it's mad. And um, how, in terms of... You know, we're all from around Warwickshire. Um, you're friends with the Weltons. Ellie works for Racing yeah, TV. They're yeah. big point-to-point -point yeah. people. The Whaley Cohens, of course, yeah. just down the road from me as well. Th this will be a story that kind of resonates with a lot of people you know. You'll be able to put faces to a, a lot of the people yeah. who are really interested in yeah, this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And he, he's got a big fan club, Bob has in Warwickshire. Yeah. He's got a big fan club full stop, I think. But, yeah, everybody's <laughs> rooting for us. Is it this sort of thing, Tom, where you're, you know, you're busy anyway, but when you go to the shops, people are asking you... You go pick up the milk, people are asking how the horse is. We haven't quite got to that stage yet, but uh, <laughs> maybe if he was lucky enough to go well in it, we might. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It might build to that, I guess, but the more of this that goes on, but uh, I will see, really. And as a, as a racing fan, as someone who's kind of in and around the business, your sort of appreciation of the, the national down the years? In my first memory of it, actually, I was thinking about it the other day, was Red Marauder winning in that year. It was so wet, and we were on a... We were on a boat on the Thames, weren't we? We were, on holiday, yeah, we and were. we watched it off this little tiny TV. Yeah. And that was my first like proper recolle recollection of it. Uh, uh, I can remember clearly how the race unfolded and everything. But no, it's a uh, like it, it is it is the greatest race in the world. So like it would be, it's it is bonkers. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? And uh, funnily enough, I've been wa watching back sort of previous nationals over the last few weeks, and the year that Papillon won it, yeah, in. Um, in 2000, 
Red Marauder ran in that year's national. And on the BBC broadcast, actually, they do a, a kind of chat afterwards. And Dunwoody's in the, the weighing room talking to some of the other jockeys who'd, who'd ridden in that. And Richard Guest was on Red Marauder that. And, and he was interviewed by Dunwoody. And he, he said, yeah, it didn't jump, jump well. I was hoping to get into a bit of confidence. And his final line was, um, I don't expect we'll be back next year. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong he was. That was his final line. <laughs> and of course, they came back next year and won the thing. Yeah. But I suppose that sport, isn't it? It just shows you. You never, you never know, especially in a, in a race like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is, um, anything can happen and you have to be in it to win it, don't you, as, uh, as they say. So yeah, for us to be having, what, that's going to be my first runner as a licensed trainer as well. So it's all been a bit of a. Uh, not a rush to get it, but the BHA have worked really well with us, luckily, and um, helped sort of get everything along at a good pace and, and managed to get it all sorted in time, which was the main concern, really, at one point. I think Dan would have quite liked to have put the brakes on it for a few more weeks. Well, <laughs> Might have been I handy do, for him, but I, yeah. Well, the, the, um, I, I don't want to mention it, but yeah. the trainer's title. I mean, that would seal the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that. We're that would talking go to... like he can't lose here. Like there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's quite a few fences and 33 other reasons he might not win. But um, you know, uh, yeah, we've got a chance, obviously. And for for us, I just felt however long we train horses for. Like one thing is guaranteed, I'll never have another one that mum bred that my wife's going to ride. So, not in that race anyway. It's an unbelievable story, and he's got a chance. I was amazed to see, you know, the, the price he was. Um, I, I, <laughs> I thought he th just he stays, he's improved. You know, he, he seems to be getting better even at, at his age. Um, he jumps well. I'm, I'm surprised. I, th I thought he'd be like a 12, 14 to one shot, to be honest. I think it's because he's perhaps had so little goes on the track, you know, he's more known as a point-to-pointer, so I think people can't really judge the form that well. Um, and, like, when he, when, he ran in, when he won the Fox Hunters, a lot of people said to me, because he, he hadn't ran in a hunter chase running up, running up to it, he'd stayed in the point-to-point, -point, but purely because of the weights. Um, once they've won a couple of hunter chases, they get penalised, and, um, you know, he's so small, and carrying 12 and a half stone was just too much for him. So he just stuck to the point-to-points of him, and he'd won a couple of them, but, like, people... No one really knew what he'd, what he'd won or, or what he'd achieved, really. So I think it's hard for people to gauge sort of how good he is. Mm. Mind you, Silver Birch, Tiger Roll, gone from the cross country to entry. Wasn't a, wasn't a bad route, to be <laughs> fair. You, you've the, sort of trainer switched back to you from around February. What, how, how's his kind of training programme been since then, Tom? Yeah, like we've not done anything vastly different with him to be honest to what we have we've got him ready for an entry festival for three years on the trot you know this is the fourth so for us it was more or less business as usual follow a very similar path obviously we ran a haydock in a hurdle race over on very very heavy ground rather than in a point of point but you know he's he's followed a very similar path we've not really changed anything that much with him he schooled for the first time over fence over the national fences on Friday Friday was it? Yeah, yeah Friday. Fr yeah, Friday, and he jumped brilliantly. So, um, no, very happy with him. He looks really, really well. Yeah, we just hope for a clear run now for the next fortnight, don't you? That's the main. Do you know allowed to ride him at home? I ride him every day. No one else is allowed to ride <laughs> him. <so. laughs> no one else is allowed on him. <laughs> it's the other way round. The boots on the other foot. You're, you're, you're calling it. Yeah. And in, you've talked about his 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 character and how how relaxed he is. It, You'd imagine he's got the kind of mental tools for the job of all the hullabaloo of a day like that. Yeah, like I said, he's been he's been to an entry festival the last three years now, and he's he just handles it like any other meeting really. And he's well, he went to a festival at Cheltenham as well, but I suppose that was in COVID, so there was no one there. Um, but yeah, that type that type of thing doesn't seem to get him wound up. He just carries on like normal, really. Fantastic, uh, Tom. Do you allow yourself to to dream? Yeah, I do dream about it. <laughs> um, I'm quite a level-headed guy, though. I, d I wouldn't be getting carried away thinking we've <laughs> we're a certainty or anything like that. But no, I I just hope we have a clear run for, from now till the 13th. And if she gets a nice ride round and we get a good position with no bad luck, I'd like to think we'd have a have a chance turning in. And from then on, who knows? And that that's it. Dream. You do you do need that. I mean, there are lots of different ways to. To win the nationals, looking back on Seagram uh, from from '91, <laughs> Nigel Hogg. I don't, that horse wasn't mentioned in commentary literally till they were approaching 
the ditch second circuit <laughs> he'd come from the back of the field whereas Ruby on on Papillon is always in the first yeah. five jumping he literally apart from the loose horse once on the first circuit not a bother at, uh, at all so you there are different ways to do it Gina but you uh, you probably need a slice of luck and your fox hunters experience how, how have how have those races panned out yeah like I'd had really good rides on him in the fox hunters um but I'd been right up the front, sort of trying to keep out of any any trouble. Like I was always worried about getting bought down or something like that, you know. So, and I obviously knew he'd stay that trip really well. Whereas with the national, I don't know if he's going to stay that far or not. So I think I'll probably ride him a bit more conservatively and just, like we said, just try and get in a little pocket and get into a rhythm. And obviously, the, the fox hunters, you got all the amateurs in the national. There's a blend, uh, and the majority are going to be pros. What what, what do you think the, that the build-up's going to be like? Um, I think it'll be very, very much similar. I think um, I'll I'll do the same as what I always do. Um, and yeah, hope, yeah, I hope, hope I'll probably be the only amateur in it, I suppose. But I think the, the boys. Oh, Dave, Dave, David might have a ride in it. I think. Yeah, yeah. the the Brom head horse is yeah. his boat. Ain't that a shame? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you'd, what a story that'd be. You and him, head to head, yeah. off the elbow. Yeah. Well, we were in the fox hunters when, <laughs> yeah. when, when Bob won, so, um, um, no, yeah, look, let's just see. Um, and Pippa, how much does Tom tell you about exactly what's going on at home? <laughs> and how, mu how much do you, want, you get out in the mornings to see for your own eyes? I don't, I don't get out there a lot, actually. In the winter, I go up every Saturday to watch the schooling and things, but I think I'm told anything that matters yeah um, but you know they're busy guys they've got a lot to do but it's um, yeah it's just I, I don't think any of us are, we all know the enormity of the task he's facing but I, I think he deserves his place there I think we've got to give it a go uh, he absolutely does and you've got to enjoy every moment enjoy the ride yeah. who's all going in terms of family and friends on I've, the day I've got my daughter and my little granddaughter coming but the other the grandson's not coming because we think he'd be more trouble than it's worth husband and two friends that always come when Bob runs and obviously Gina's parents yeah any superstitions um, I have lucky socks and a handkerchief that belong to my dad that comes everywhere with me. Fantastic. Well, yeah. Dad's going to wear his awful jumper, is he? No, he's not allowed to wear that jumper. So. He's got a lucky jumper. <laughs> so it's red so. jumper he wears all the time, but um, Which Tom? Tom's sister, Laura, said he's not, he's not allowed to wear it because he looks like a matador. Uh, yeah, Dan's he's going to call him a matador from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. What colour are the, the lucky socks? Uh, they're pink and blue. <laughs> Pink and blue pink lucky and blue. socks. Yeah, so let's hope it's not a hot day because I'll still be wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And it, you said, Tom, that this was kind of on the cards anyway in terms mm. of you know getting the licence and moving on to this next stage of your, your, both of your, your, your careers. What is, what is that looking like in the short to mid-term? Well, we've sort of built a business uh, really on the producing and trading of young horses and through the point-to-point -point field, Obviously, we have a large number of sort of syndicate-owned horses, privately-owned horses that, that people have to just enjoy. So the production side of the young horses is something I'm really keen to carry on with. We, we're not going to have owners in our yard that are going to spend 150 grand on, on horses to potentially go Saturday racing. So I think for us, in the, definitely in the medium term anyway, we'll be, we'll be trying to carry on with that and um, something that gives us a great buzz. But... No, I would like to build the national hunt side of it up over time, and I, I expect it's something that will find its own feet and, and find its level. Um, we are keen to make a go of that, definitely, um, but I just feel it might take three or four years for us to sort of get properly established and, and see how we go from there. Mind you, you win the national, maybe, maybe there are those six-figure owners are right. Maybe, maybe there is, but <laughs> it's a very big if, isn't it? You know, It's a mad world, though, isn't it, Gina? The, 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 you know the, the money that can be spent in racing these oh, yeah. days I mean, uh, yeah absolutely um it's, people seem to spend more and more money on the horses every year and it's not guaranteed to get you a really good horse like look at look at bob we've bred him he's cost very little and he's he's you know he's brilliant and here you are gone head to head with Marlins and, <laughs> and elliot and the uh, and the irish mm. flying flying the flag to to an extent yeah, look out. <laughs> I feel quite sure that somebody's going to come along and tap me on the shoulder on the day and say, excuse me, but what do you think you're doing here? You're an imposter. Out. They, they might <laughs> tap you on the shoulder and say, you just won a national. Mm. <laughs>
we can all hope. I think I might take you with me. You're quite confident. <laughs> this is good. I, 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 I genuinely, I, I was, I was in, I was in getting a, a couple of bottles of vino the other day there, and it just so I, I was. Every year I go in around national time just because they, they know I'm, I'm in racing, and they, they always ask for a few tips, and this was the horse that, that I gave as a tip yesterday. So I think he's got a great chance. I do. I but what, what, what would be? Forget the <clears> dreams. <throat> What, what, what do you think, realistically, would be a good finish? Oh, what a question. I don't know how you answer that, Ron, really. Um, I think if we have luck in running and everything goes right, like I said, I'd like to think we'd turn in with a chance. And from then on, it's in the laps of the gods. You've teed it up beautifully. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. How are you going to deal the next few weeks? Are you OK? I haven't been sleeping for a month, so Lord knows what's <laughs> going to happen to me in the next two weeks. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Pippa, Tom, Gina, great to have you on the, the sofa. You. Good luck over the next few weeks, and we'll, we'll see you at entry. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Top stuff. Uh, what a story. What a run it could be. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com. <laughs>